Without further ado, everybody, we're the man, the hour, we all know who he is. Some of you may not know. We got a lot of new people on the call today, and I want to thank you all for joining. But this young man, needs a, he doesn't need a deduction, but he does need a deduction. He's uh, one of the Yodas that was in ACN when I came over to ACN, one to watch. And uh, matter of fact, he's got a, such a large organization of who to who to who and SVPs and RVPs and, and uh, Circle of Champions in his organization. He has one of the incredible, most incredible promotion I've ever seen in ACN. Uh, when he got promoted to senior vice president when Mr. Martin Sapp came in, that's right, saying and brought the house down. Even the co-founders were sitting on the edge of their seats as well as he had Les Brown standing up next to him. And I tell you, I've never seen anything like that in my life. And I tell you what, I want to thank him. He is just a gentleman, a scholar. He is also an influencer in health, mental health, financial, and much more. My dear friend, Senior Vice President, Mr. Byron Nelson. Good morning, sir. How are you? I'm doing fantastic, sir. Great morning. I'm, I'm pulling something up here. Give me one second. One second, one second. One second. Excellent. Let's start off with, <clears throat> how's everybody doing this morning? Good morning. Oh, I love that top. I love those glasses. <laughs> I like it. I love it. I want some more of it. <laughs> so, wow, there's a lot of you on here this morning. Good morning. All right, so we're going to get started with just a little video. I, it's, I wake up every morning to, to stimulate myself with anywhere between five and six minutes of meditation. It just gives you a kick in the pants. My team knows this. Um, and I'm going to share it with you guys. So here, I'm going to let you guys watch it so we can get this party started. Here we go. Funny, funny, dude. <laughs> so, Coach, how strong is Westview this year? A lot stronger than we are. You already written Friday night down as a loss, Brock? Well, not if I know we could beat them. Come here, Brock. You too, Jeremy. What, am I in trouble now? Not yet. I want to see you do the death crawl again, except I want to see your absolute best. <laughs> what, you want me to go to the 30? I think you can go to the 50. The 50? I can go to the 50 if nobody's on my back. I think you can do it with Jeremy on your back. But even if you can, I want you to promise me you're going to do your best. All right. Your best. OK. You going to give me your best? I'm going to give you my best. All right, one more thing. I want you to do it blindfolded. Why? Because I don't want you giving up at a certain point when you can go further. Get down. Jeremy, get on his back. I get a good tight hold, Jeremy. All right. Let's go, Brock. Keep your knees off the ground. Just your hands and feet. There you go. A little bit left. A little bit left. There you go. Show me good effort. That way, Brock. You keep coming. There you go. It's a good start. A little bit left. A little bit left. There you go, Brock. Good strength. That's it, Brock. That's it. Not the 20 yet. Forget the 20. You give me your best. You keep going. That's it. No, don't stop, Brock. You got more in you than that. Hey, done. Just rest in a second. You gotta keep moving. Let's keep moving. Let's go. Don't quit till you got nothing left. There you go. Keep moving. Keep moving. Keep moving, Brock. That's it. You keep driving. Keep your knees off the ground. Keep driving it. Your very best. Your very best. Your very best. Keep moving, Brock. That's it. That's it. That's it. Keep going. Don't quit on me. Keep going. Keep driving it. Keep driving. Keep your knees off the ground. That's it. Your very best. Don't quit on me. Your very best. Keep driving. Keep driving. There you go. There you go. That's it. You keep driving. Keep your knees off the ground. Keep driving it. Don't quit till you got nothing left. Keep moving, Brock. That's it. That's it. That's it. Keep going. I want everything you got. Come on. Keep going. It hurts. Don't quit on me. Your very best. Keep driving. Keep driving. There you go. There you go. He's heavy. I know I'm, he's heavy. 
I'm buying out of strength! Then you negotiate with your body to find more strength, but don't you give up on me, Brock. You keep going, you hear me? You keep going, you're doing good, you keep going! Do not quit on me! You keep going! I know it hurts! You keep going! You keep going! It's all hard from here! 30 more steps! You keep going, Brock! Come on! Keep going! Burn! And let it burn! Oh, it's burning! It's so hard! You keep going, Brock! Come on! Come on! Keep going! You promised me your back! Your back! Don't stop! Keep going! Too hard! It's not too hard! You keep going! Come on, Brock! Give me more! Give me more! Keep going! 20 more steps! 20 more! Keep going, Brock! Give me your back! Don't quit! No! Keep going! Keep going! Keep going! Don't quit! Don't quit! Don't quit! Brock Kelly, you don't quit! Keep going! Keep going! Go, Brock Kelly! You don't quit on me! No! You keep going! You keep going! Go, Brock! Ten more steps! Ten more! Ten more! Ten more! Keep going! Don't quit! Give me your heart! You can! You can! Five more! Five more! Come on, Brock! Come on! Don't quit! Don't quit! Come on, Brock! Two more! One more! I've got you, sissy. I've got you, sissy. I'll have you more. Look up, Brock. You're in the end zone. Brock, you are the most influential player on this team. If you walk around defeated, so will they. Don't tell me you can't give me more than what I've been seeing. You just carried a 140-pound man across this whole field on your arms. Brock, I need you. God's gifted you with the ability of leadership. Don't waste it. Coach? Can I count on you? Yes. Coach? What is it, Jeremy? I weigh 160. Thirty weighed one sixteen. My question this morning is: How far can you go? How far are you going to push yourself? There are times in which you want to give up. Nod your head if you understand that conversation, right? But then, when you look at the alternative, the question is: What are you going to do? If not this, what else are you going to do? Now, I'm not saying that many of you don't have choices and you don't have options i'm not saying that what i'm saying is how many times are you going to actually start over it's a question you want to ask yourself right how many times are you going to keep starting over and i'm not talking about in the business i'm talking about in life with projects with looking at different things that you can do what if you actually just stayed the course finish this just to just complete and see it through just finish what you start that, I mean, that's the message. Because see, it's really easy to be distracted. It's very easy. Before you came into ACN, you had a lot of different alternatives. Before you came into ACN, you were already doing something. It wasn't necessarily working, but you were already doing something. You, you never really finished to see if this, so all the, let's just say the devil's best friends, right? Doubt, fear, and worry. For those that have never heard me speak before, please write them down. It's the devil's three best friends. It's doubt, fear, and worry. And they come knocking on the door. They come banging on the door, in fact. Uh, and no matter what, it's a constant. You may think that a person that has hit SVP like Mr. Al Thomas or, you know, RVP like Jocelyn Driscoll or, you know, gotten where Julian is. I mean, you may feel like, okay, well, they're just superhuman beings. They aren't superhuman. What was super about each person that's ever finished, if you look at you know, a Renata and Boris, if you look at any of the top leaders that have completed the mile and Aaron Birch, you know, a Pat Mays, they, you know, a Shaquille, you know, any of these individuals, all they understood was how to finish.
they just made a decision that I'm going to finish this. And I get it more than anybody else as far as how doubt will kick in because it's like the emergence of challenges in our life that take us and I got to take care of the kids. Well, I already have a business going. Some of you already have a business that you're maintaining. Some of you are already working a high end profession. Some of you are already working three, you know, the jack of all trades. You know, some of you already have established the hardest thing to do is create, and I'm gonna tell you the hardest thing to do besides getting rid of distractions, which you can write down. That would be at the top of my list is if I'm starting something, how do I eliminate the distractions? I see this in different ventures that I work on now. How do I eliminate the distractions and stay focused? This is going somewhere, by the way. I hope you guys get this little sermon this morning. But the key is finishing what I start, meaning completing what I start. So when you look at Angel and Jen Carmona and, you know, and other people that just had a baby, because I know there's a lot of people just having a baby. Some people have babies. Some people are single parents. You know, some people have, yeah, we got a whole lot of excuses. I'm a firm believer that in this season, you're either going to claim excuses or experiences. You're either going to claim excuses or experiences. The experience of the difficulty of being able to make this manure work for you, that grows grass, that grows gardens, for lack of other words, <laughs> is understanding the minutia that comes with this and what it will do for your life in growing a garden of prosperity. You need a garden of prosperity. That garden of prosperity, we could, we could metaphorically say that it deals with points, customers, volume, you know, residual, um, you know, new business partners, but it really doesn't. The, the myriad or the, the, all of the different crops we have in the garden make it a garden. Otherwise, it would just be called avocado. That's not a garden. That's just one vegetable or, you know, celery or carrots. But what makes it a garden is it having different things that feed the body. You having apples, you having an orange, or, you know, oranges. You have these different orchards. You have these uh, different vegetables. You have, you know, I got some, I got some, I got some carrots here, and I have some, uh, I have some different type of roots over here, and I have some different type of herbs over here. I have some different type of flowers over here. I have some different type of. That's what makes it a garden. Does that make sense? Are you guys with me on that so far? You need to, but, but what's really amazing about the garden is it takes the same, it, it takes the, the ingredients for it to grow are the same for all of them. They all need to be watered. They all need attention. They all need some vitamin D. And you, for some reason, as a human, we feel like we need to get a whole lot of different things in order to focus in on our garden, when in reality, you don't. So when we talk about getting rid of in the garden, it's really the garden of life. It's our life that will grow you the prosperity, that will give you the fruit of prosperity. It's our life. It's discipline. It's consistency, it's commitment. You know, I'm, I'm looking at Coach K who's retiring and he's the coach of, of Duke basketball for those that don't know. And he's going down as the winningest coach in history and the debate is who was the greatest coach in basketball between him and John Wooden, who happens to be one of my heroes and one of my mentors and someone who I actually went and played in his camp several years with John Wooden. A man who won 10 championships out of 11. Crazy. And John Wooden was so much about basics as Coach K is. 
you're talking about this man has had, and don't quote me, but I want to say he's had, I'll go back and look at the notes I took on it. I want to say he has had in his stretch of X amount of years, he's had over 40 number one draft picks for the NBA come out of his university. Over 40. Do you know how amazing? First of all, just to get into the NBA, there's only 450 people out of 8 billion people on the planet that ever play in that game. And in your lifetime, to have more championships, I mean, I think, I believe he's working, he's had five championships, which is much more difficult than winning the championship in the NBA because there's so many more schools. And this year, he may get his sixth. So I had a conversation with my team this week in my executive call and said, what do you want on your forehead? Like on my forehead, when I die, I wanted to say the greatest coach that ever lived. That I have developed more success in self-development than anybody has ever done in life. I didn't say I want to be one of the greatest. God willing, he gives me another four decades on this planet because we know he's taking them left and right or the Grim Reaper is showing up at a lot of places. But given enough time that he has given me enough to really grow and develop and hand, have a hand in developing more successful leaders in all of lifetime. The greatest coach that's ever lived that the line is so long that I can't get to them all in my lifetime. Now, what's on your forehead? What's even worse, what's even more sad is you don't have anything up there. You, you haven't even thought about it. You haven't thought about what your sign, what your mental tattoo I love tattoos. I mean, I don't have any, but I, I love tattoos. I just, I have a thing of, that's a whole nother conversation from a, a Black perspective in jail. But at the same time, I appreciate them. It's just the school I came from. Please don't take that out of context. I love people that have tattoos. I wish I could have had tattoos. It's kind of like some of the things my father screamed at me about when I was a child that I just, I feel like he'll come out of his grave and beat my ass. So I just never got one, <laughs> you know? It comes from slavery and history and people, but for me and how I was rooted. But, you know, there's certain things that, and my mom's still alive. So after my mom passes, I'll probably get a tattoo. After my mom passes, I'll probably get a motorcycle that she made me. See, I'm very much about words. My mom said, so long as I'm alive, you will never have a motorcycle. I said, okay, well, I need you to live another 20 years, but so long as I live one year after you, I will have a motorcycle. In fact, I bought a Ducati. I made so much money one year and I put it in the garage and all I did was look at it. I was like, damn, man, I, yeah, I just, I couldn't ride it because my mom was alive, but I just looked at it. I was like, ah, I love that. And you're like, my friends were looking at me like I was crazy. It's like, you bought a Ducati? It's like, when we go and ride? And I was like, oh, you can ride it whenever you want. I can't get on it. It's, Hold on, you paid a hundred thousand for a car, a, a motorcycle, you can't ride I can't ride it. <laughs> so, but um, but what's what's on your forehead? It's Friday morning, the 4th of June, in the year 2021 AD, our Lord. What's on your forehead? How, how are you going to be remembered? How, how do people not, and, and see what, what really is amazing about the, the forehead tattoo? It's not about how you're just going to be remembered, but how do people see you right now? It's really about that dash. It's not even about the, you know, the beginning and the end, the alpha and the omega. It's about the dash that allows you to live past the DOA. If somebody looked at you right now and said, what's on their forehead? You know, what, 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 do, they signi what do they signify to you? The greatest person that ever came into my life. The greatest influencer that ever came into my life the greatest support that ever came into my life. 
the safest person, this person created the greatest and the safest place for me to ever find refuge, to always find my spirit. This person gave me the greatest amount of encouragement more than anybody else in my life to make me believe that I could become amazing. This person loved on me so much, I could never let him down. This person was such an example of going the extra mile that I don't know how to do anything less. This person was the epitome of humility. I mean, they never once took credit for anything, but did everything. This person made me understand confidence in my life and how never to listen to the naysayers. This person showed me how to finish things that I would have never finished, like getting 200 points, like finishing SVP. This person taught me how to run a business and not a daycare. This person taught me how that this little thing called ACN was not a go along gang, <laughs> as my man would say. <laughs> and I just went along with the crowd. You know, I've been studying this Kwame Brown thing. It's something to study. Now, I don't agree with this dialect in 100%, um, nor the way he presents it, but I totally can relate from where he's from but he's that person that just got tired. You're talking about, I don't know if you guys have watched any of it or know any of it, if you're on any social media and I'm not, and it still found me. But you're talking about 2001, he was the number one draft pick and the, and the first person at the, at, to ever be drafted into the NBA out of high school at the age of 17 and became the brunt or the stepping stone for sportscasters to make their bones in the industry. And it wasn't until two months ago, he just snapped. <laughs> it's 221, 20 years later, he's been out of the NBA for over 10 years and they're still talking about him. And what helped him snap, and I, I'm, I'm hoping this relates to you, this isn't is about Kwame Brown, I don't really give a damn. But I want you to understand he had a snapping, a breaking point because they were talking so bad about him like he was a bust when he's made millions of dollars. He made over $60 million in the NBA. First of all, if that's a bust, may I be a bust? <laughs> I'm trying to be a bust yesterday. Please make me the bust. But what snapped him, what made him break is he has a teenage son who's really into the sports and the social media, who's hearing this narrative. And he was like, I could handle it to the day I die, but I got a family and I got a son who has to hear this all over the world. And I've been out of the league for 10 years. My question, if we were sitting down one-on-one -on -one would be, what's your breaking point? When do you get tired? How do your kids see you? See, there are people watching you. Whether you have children or you don't have children, there are people watching and waiting for you to validate their failure or to find a reason to, to succeed. We all, anyone that has children understands, we know our children only listen with the filter, but they're watching even more. They may do out of an authoritative perspective what you tell them, just like even if you don't have children, what you did for your parents, you did it out of, out of respect or out of authority that you did what they tell them. But that you know that you only listen with the filter, that you did more watching than you did listening. What's your, what's your tipping point to get tired of being where you are and become the example that only comes by way of an extraordinary work ethic. When do you go to work? When does when do you start watering your garden and stop talking? Nobody could nobody could talk about your work ethic. 
Nobody can talk about your consistency. Nobody can talk about your humility. Nobody can talk about your character. Nobody can talk about your smile. Nobody can talk about your laughter. Nobody can talk about your contribution to the human race. Nobody can talk about your attitude. Nobody can talk about your, you know, I, this, my dad quit. He just walked out of his job. He just got fed up and he said, I have an alternative. He found a, an alternative, he made it work and enjoyed it and bless people along the way. That was his only job. His job description was to bless people, figure out how to talk to people and bless people. That's what he did 24 hours a day, seven days a week and bring it back home to the house. And the more blessings he did, the bigger our household became as far as a blessing period. The more time he had for me, the more he was sharing the lessons. Think about the, think about the power of this opportunity. Think about the power of the opportunity. Everyone at some point or another had a job. And I'm sure there's some A students in here before ACN, but I'm gonna talk about the greater majority, like over 95, 98, 99%. 95, 98, 99% did not go to their job and bring lessons home to the kitchen. You didn't go out being a plumber or working in, you know, with a hard hat on or, or a nurse or, you know, very rarely even as a teacher and you bring all those lessons. Let me tell you what I learned at work today. Let me tell you what happened at work today. Let me, you didn't do that. You may have shared it with your better half because you were forced to. That was part of the protocol and the contract you signed when you were married. But beyond that, of sharing your life with the person you're with, you didn't go home telling your kids, you know, in this business, every chance I get to, to pour on my son, I, I, I've shared with my son that my son is who he is today and becoming the man that he is because of every lesson that he got in this, in this business. I ran into a, one of my partners, crazy enough, my, my, one of my best friends, his name is Derek, he's a dentist. And he actually um, is the godfather, one of the godfathers to my, to my, to my son. And I went in and one of the very first, the five people who built the foundation for where I am, I mean, literally built this, they were like the cement of this company. Haven't seen him in years. And because of my best friend who was my first RD to get me, one of the first of uh, five RDs to get me to uh, the top position, he introduced me to this kid, this kid who is in now. My best friend is probably one of the best dentists, bar none, in all of the state of California, if not in the country. I don't have time to give him his accolades or edification, but just know he's one of the best, and, and it, it's his it's his protocol that makes it that way. But he was a he was a dentist back then. He was going in and finishing. He had finished dentistry then. He I helped him open up his first office, right? And we had visions of what we were doing. And we stay best friends because of our dream. And he still supports in anything that he needs to support in. And he's, he's taking, taking care of my father, my mother, my sister, my son, everybody and my whole family. He's almost, you know, that's been the family dentist. So I went in yesterday to take my mom because her mom, her tooth broke. And he introduced me to this young kid. He's like this, he's an understudy. He's just shadowing me for the week. I said, really? I was like, man, well, it's good to meet you, young man. I was like, I love, love what you're doing. You're with the right person and uh, anything I have to do, here's my card. That's the way we operate as a family. It had nothing to do with ACM. We just keep, keep, keep the food chain going of pouring into young men. It's our, it's our obligation. It's not, it's not a luxury. It's a freaking obligation. So here's my card. You need anything? If you're working, if, you, if you're shouting him, you got a family you don't even know you have. And he introduced me and he says, this is Mike Hatter's 19 year old son. Well, Mike Hatter was one of the first five people that started with me as a team trainer, ETL, RD. I, literally for the first two years, I had not seen this kid, don't know this kid because I haven't seen, you know, like I didn't even know he had a child. My son, is, my son is 22. I was like, that means I knew your father six years before you were even born. <laughs> this is what he produced. Of course he did. He came out of the ACN system. <laughs> of course he did. How could he not? 
you are a beautiful young man. I am loving you. You don't even know. He's like, yes, sir. He said, I, what, what's your name again? I said, here's my card. Go tell your father you found me. He said, yes, sir. You don't understand the tattoo. You understand how far you're playing this like a temporary game, like you're just in a season, like it's a hobby. Now you may not think you're playing it like a hobby, but I tell you, just go ask anybody that's ever quit. Most of them act like they like, oh my God, like, like they were in a bad relationship, not understanding the bad relationship was with themselves. People that don't succeed here, they're in a bad relationship with themselves. That's why their garden never grew. That's why they never had any fruit, any vegetation. Never, they never, they never had anything to eat off of it. So they're, 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 it's almost like, you know, people that are angry at themselves. It, it, it's, it's, it's like they haven't learned how to divorce the bad them. <laughs> and marry the good them. Does that make sense? Does anybody understand this conversation? And because they never took the time to understand the garden, in my garden, we talked about consistency. We talk about commitment. We talk about coachability. We talk about distractions. We talk about character. We talk about truth. We talk about integrity. We talk about work ethic, sweat equity. We talk about overachieving. We talk about attitude. We talk, it's just an amazing garden. We talk about loving ourselves, that I can't love someone else until I love myself. We talk about if I have the garden, I can get off my knees, wake up and have vegetation. I can have 250 points. I can have this week five new business partners, I can have ETL out of the way for me to be blessed with a bigger B paycheck within seven days. I can have RD out of the way in less than 90 days, 180 max. If I'm taking care of my garden now, there may be some bad seasons because of the weather. So it may take me four or five months, but once I make a decision, no human being should come into this business without a six, a three to six month period of time of producing the result of RD. And it should take me a maximum, I'm sorry, a minimum of, you know, for an average person, if I, if I don't have the confidence, I, maybe I need to water the confidence a little bit more. If I don't have the, the market, maybe I need to water where my people are coming from. If I don't have the business skill set, maybe I need to read a little bit. If I don't have the leadership, maybe I need to water that part of the garden a little bit more. If I don't have the charisma, maybe I need to study some speakers a little bit more. If I don't know how to present, maybe I need to water that part of the garden a little bit more. If I only have like anywhere between six and 16 points, 23 points. I only have 30 points and I've been in past three, four months. Maybe I need to understand how to exchange energy, exchange gifts, exchange services a little bit more water that part of the garden. But I need to pay attention to my garden. You need to stop. If a person is broken this business, it's because they're constantly at the flea market at somebody else's garden. You should stop shopping at the flea market and you should stop shopping in Beverly Hills and in, you know, Manhattan in, in New York where you can't afford it. You should stop looking at your Al Thomases. You should stop looking at your Byron Nelsons. It's good to know where you want your store with your name on it for those who remember legacy. Um, it's good to know about that, you know, where you want to place your store, but you should really focus in on your garden. So you could develop a name for yourself. It's your name. You don't need anybody else's name. It's really quite amazing. I was sharing, um, 
you know. Terrible movie. Uh, let me see if I can pull this up here. So as I as I share here, let me go here. Can you guys see that? Jeffrey, can you see my screen? Okay. So as I go here and I just tap in and I share with my team and I said, we give you an open book test. To go in, if you just look, if you just scroll, presentation with Jeff Street, compensation plan with Tony, opportunity, we don't even like the man with the fake hairdo, but you know, it's here. Everything. I avoid everything that's in this seven profitable business ideas. The co-founders 30th event in 2021. As I go down and I just scroll, if I just go up to the top, if I just click on AC and opportunity to exclude all the rest. And I sit there. I counted out over 200 videos. <laughs> 200 videos. And not a single one of them had an entry point less than $20,000. And the- How could you, how could you have over 200 videos that you don't have to pay $10,000 for a virtual online school. And the videos last from anywhere from three minutes to 31 minutes a day. That in order to be successful, we give you an open book test that you have to have at least 30 minutes in a day. 30 minutes a day. that you can watch a video every day. In fact, you shouldn't can watch, you need to watch one video every day. If you watch one video every day, in addition to you can get the site that Je Jeffrey has, just our own arsenal is <laughs> probably the most dangerous on the planet. And everything else like getting on this call would be extra credit it would be impossible for you to fail. You know, I, I have everything from Evernotes and you look at the things I have. I have playlists um, of things that I study. I have up for my son. I was going over and explaining to him credit. I said, let me share with you dad's credit. I have no problem. See, I can't show you my income. I would love to show you my income and how much money I made. And we're only in June. I would love to do that. I can't do that because it's being recorded. But guess what? I can show you my credit score. I can show you my total debt, which is $7,000. You know how much money I make? My total debt. My total usage. And I'll be paid. I think I paid that off. They just had not upgraded yet. I keep that at 10%. My inquiries will be gone in less than like 30 days. That will take that to an 810. I never go under a 740 to an 810 credit score. What's your credit score? What's your debt? I know yours is out. <laughs> I mean, I'm just asking. I, I mean, I have no problem showing that. I mean, I wish I could open up my asset portfolio and show you money, but he's going to kick me out of the company because it'll be too much like enticement. Something almost seems superhuman. They just took time to, to focus, time to get rid of distractions, time to help other people. There is my, let me tell you my favorite, um, where is it here? Hold on one second, stick with me. 
the, the, here's what we're going to focus in on in, in, in the month of June. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you what you need to be watering the most in the month of June. I want to tell you the vegetation is going to give you the greatest amount of thrust to take over this life and this industry called your life for 2021. Please write it down. It's called patience. Now, patience is an acronym, just like Bible is for, you know, instruction. So I hope you're taking really good notes for this training here. Because I have the greatest training talking to myself as I had a conversation with God before I got on here this whole week about, okay, what am I not doing? What, what's going on here? Things are moving in the right direction. I'm having amazing, but I'm on the roller coaster, God. So I'm up, I'm down, I'm up. I'm like, I, what's, what's happening here? I need, to take, I need to take ownership and control of this here. Bring it back, bring it back. And I realized, you know, in addition to my beautiful cup that I already know we all are, ah, I needed some more patience. You know what I'm drinking? Patience. I'm not in a rush to tell you this information. I'm not in a rush for anything. Write down urgency. I have a lot of urgency. But I'm not in a rush for anything. But I keep urgency at the top of my list. I have patience and then I have urgency so that I don't so I don't confuse patience with complacency. See, many of you will take that patience and become a scientist. Patience is not a scientist. I didn't tell you to go watch a video every day so you can be empowered intelligently, so you can just sit there and become paralysis of analysis and you get a whole bunch of information and now you're intelligent. There's patience and then there's urgency. but we're just gonna focus on the patience for right now. The P in patience means paid, paid. That's what the P is, paid. What am I investing? What am I putting in? What, what am I doing? What am I putting, how much am I putting towards my goals? How much am I paying forward? How much am I, I gotta pay it. If you don't pay, you don't play. It's real simple. When people don't pay, they don't pay attention. As Mr. Al Thomas says, we only don't pay attention to the people that have their, their camera on. You know why? Because people, now I'm not putting nobody on blast. I'm sure some people got some great excuses, but this is a virtual world and it's the best and the worst thing you could ever have. My team knows this. Why? Because some of these people are behind a camera and you're multitasking. You ain't paying attention. I do not want you doing surgery on my mom. I don't want you on my freaking team because you are not 100% present. I had to get up this morning. I had to put on my cute colors. I had to figure about my cute glasses with my cute colors. I had to come with my attitude. I had to come with my personality and see if we sat down in coffee we'd have to sit down one-on-one -on -one and I could look you in your eye and say are you serious about making some money but because you at home you think you could just put up a picture and you can multitask have it playing in the background do this that and the other or you can do this you can do that you aren't serious you can't treat you treat you are treating this like a hundred thousand dollar business and you got 15 things other things going on and it's the same people that act the same way all the freaking time I don't want them on my team We go to dinner and you pick up your phone and you look at your phone the whole time I'm talking to you, I'm getting up, I have. I went on a date many moons ago. I was on a date, true story, my team knows this. Oh girl, most baddest woman you could ever meet in the planet. Gorgeous as all heaven, Miss Brazil. Sitting up there, did did it, did it, did By the time she looked, I said, I'm going to the bathroom. By the time she looked up, I had texted her and said, the car's outside, the mill is paid for. She said, what are you talking about? I said, she said, where? I thought you were in the bathroom, are you okay? I said, I've been gone a long time ago. You out on a date with your phone. I hope you and the phone have a great meal. It's paid for. Do you think I play? I'm very serious. My team knows I'm very serious about the way I operate. 
I ain't playing with you. I have no problem paying for it. I, I, I could buy the restaurant. I didn't come here for you. Wait, you think I'm here for you? What the hell is wrong with you? It always amazes me. Two people sitting at a table, both of them on the cell phone at the same time. What the hell you go to dinner for? I've seen five people at a table, five men and women at the same time. All of them, what the hell are we here for? Don't get on my screen. My team knows. Do not get on my screen. I will put you on blast in a second. I took the time to be present with you. You take the time to be present with me or don't get on my calls. This is a training call, so I'm allowed to say this. If you're brand new, I'm sorry if I hurt your feelings. This, this may not be the game for you. I'm just dead serious. Sir, continue on. Teach it. That's right. That's just, that's just, that's just a weak play. I don't want to talk to a screen. If I did that, we could just get an 800 number, a conference call number. We can all get on the call. What the hell we got this for? You aren't going to learn anything like this. this is a virtual world we live in. You want to have a global business, you're going to have to look and be able to talk and see and be visual. I, you had a bad hair day? Do what I did. Cut it all off. I don't give a damn. <laughs> this is simple. You all like the way your house is? Clean it up. They got these things called a green screen. Go buy one. You don't like where you live? Work this business and change your address. Make sure your view is the ocean like mine is from my house. Give a damn. The only one that gets a few excuses are like Caroline and a few other people that are like making sacrifices on a job to be on the damn phone. I, and she still comes on every time at her job. But there are a few passes. Some people do get a pass, but not every freaking week? Hell no. I don't work for me. That doesn't work for me. So the P stands for paid. What are you paying into your business? The A in patient stands for paid actions. What actions are you taking? Remember, right under patients is what? Urgency. So what actions are you taking? The, I mean, the T stands for timely. They have to be timely. Everything I do has to have, has a clock on it. Has a clock on it. I'm not spending too much time. I, the, the, here's, here's, here's how investments and, and our business go hand in hand. They are well, they're one and the same. If you're, if you're an investor, one of the biggest problems people have with investments, whether it's stocks, commodities, Options, especially options, crypto, anything with investments is staying in an investment too long when it's not making you any money. You know, the biggest problem in our business, putting time into the wrong person for too long. Immediate parallel. Now, that doesn't mean you just disregard some you just put over to the side and you water it enough because it's only going to grow to the degree that you water it. You keep it on reserve. You check on it every 30 days. But you sitting on a piece of, you know, on a piece of land or you putting on an investment or you sitting on top of a, a, a prospect or a, or a business partner even that is not producing anything. It doesn't mean you stomp it out or you pull it out. It's not a weed. It still has great potential. It may not grow for four months, but it does not get all your attention. You need to shift 80, 90% of your attention towards a seed that's going to produce you something, a customer that's going to produce you something, a prospect that's going to produce you something, a business partner that's going to produce you something. You need to take the right actions. Is this making sense to anybody this morning? Paid actions in a timely fashion. The T stands for timely. The I stands for intense. Impatience, you gotta be intense. Do I seem intense? I am intense. This is taking coal and creating a diamond. I'm applying pressure every day of my life. I need to be intense about what I'm doing. Now, this is another class for another day that you need to understand how to have what is called, you know, relaxed intensity. You want to write it down for another day, relaxed intensity. And I'm just going to explain to you, Mr. Al Thomas has relaxed intensity. The people that I deal with in my circle, because they already have seven and eight figures, they're very relaxed. 
but they're very intense. That's how they got their seven and eight figures. They're very intense. They're constantly applying pressure on themselves. I am constantly applying pressure on myself. That's how I woke up this morning, understanding what I was going to share with you this morning as far as Byron, this, okay, this is what's happening. This is what's happening. You need to have some patience, but you need to apply this patience towards urgency of doing some other things for a different result. Intense, very intense, intently, on purpose, on intention. Give me all the different ways so you can understand this word. The E after I stands for empowerment. Am I empowering myself and am I empowering others? Am I empowering myself? What am I going to read today? What am I going to study? What am I going to learn new today? What am I going to develop? How am I going to make the needle move? Physically, I'm looking at, okay. My partner looked at me and said, well, what's in, what's in your bottle? What you drinking? What you drinking? I said, ISO pure. Julian you know, like that. He said, well, and, and now our question now, because we're so focused on our health and what we're attempting to do to grow our body in so many ways, she said, well, how much, and, it, and she asked me for uh, actually tripping out off of this, like what's, how much sugar is in it? Now I talked to Dom, how much sugar is in it? See my whole ecosystem. How much sugar is in what you, and, I, and it's crazy because I'll look sometimes like, oh my God, I had like, I had like six grams of sugar in it. And it's like supposed to be a shot. I had to throw it away. This has zero carbs, zero sugar, zero fat, four grams of BCAAs, 100% protein from whey. Okay. I like to get vegan, but I can live with whey. 20 grams of protein, non-GMO, 80 calories. And it tastes good. I look at exactly what's, I see what I'm talking about is being detailed enough where I'm not an A type, but detailed enough to look at the ingredients of everything that you take in. By the way, by the way, you're constantly eating. It's either going into your mouth or it's going into your ear. You need to figure out what you're eating. The conversations you're having, what you listen to, who's talking around you. It's not all bad. It may be dressed up and actually say, you know, a, a, a shot of, I, I'll give you an example. Hold on, I'll give you an example. I gotta give you an example. So I was supporting somebody. In fact, I support five people because these network marketing companies, these network marketing companies, they're, that, they're like, they, sh they come around like this little flea that's flying around in my room. You keep seeing me swing at. That, and then what we'll gets get you all hyped. Oh, that seems like a good trend. Oh, this is going to be good. And you don't hear about them. It's just like, all you got to do is wait like three months and they like almost dissipate, like, like evaporate, evaporate like in the desert. It's like water just de evaporates in the desert. So I had like 20 people call me when this company came up. And I happened to have a bottle. I was, because I'm, re as you guys can see, I'm redoing everything in my life, reset. And I happened to have one at the bottom. And I thought it was a good idea. So it's this company called, yeah, I'm going to put it on blast, Nutribullet. Some of y'all may have even tried and heard about it. Everybody called me, you got to get some Nutribullet. Oh, I have people that were very successful calling me. Oh, you got to get some Nutribullet. You got to get, oh my God. I, I've talked to you about ACN. I know, but this is healthy for you. And this is good. And it's all minerals. Nigga, all this stuff. And we could, I'm going to open up my own Nutribullet like lab in my own little, my own little store. And I'm looking and I was like, and I hadn't had it in a while because I use, you know, trace mineral drops. I, I use real mineral, you know, water. My stuff is pure. It's like everything, because I'm looking at the ingredients, right? But when, I, when it first came out, which was a while ago, I'm looking, I'm like, and so I'm looking, I'm saying, 
I just took a cup. I was like, yeah, it's kind of cool. It tastes good. It tastes like a little orange tangerine. And my partner looked and said, how much sugar it got in it? I'm like, ah, oh, shit, I forgot to look. Let me look. It's just a cup. Got eight grams of sugar. She said, so you why don't you just go get you a teaspoon and just take, you know, like three teaspoons of sugar and put it in your body then. I was like, damn. My point, some of you have some friends. Some of you have some business partners. Some of you have some pseudo leaders around you. They got really good colors. <laughs> it's dressed up to be good for you. They talking to you like they do. They want your best interest. And you take it and you want to know why you're still where you're at in life. In fact, you go backwards. You don't have no more customers, no new business partners, but you had a great conversation, didn't you? You just spent, you didn't invest. You just spent a whole lot of time on the wrong person, even in your business. They had some great colors too. They acted, they paid their what? $200, $500 to get in the business. They've been around, they get on every call. They act like they good for you, don't they? And you still got hope in them, don't you? Yeah, you do. That's okay. I've been there before. I understand. That's why we call it phase one. That's why we call it it's easier to give birth than to raise the dead. It means don't give up on the dead seeds because I haven't seen some seeds give birth, but you need some new seeds. You want to get your business moving? Go get you five new business partners in the next five. I, I challenge you. Hell, go get you three by next Friday. I don't, you don't need to tell me what's going on in your business. You want to say your business isn't moving? It's not moving as fast as you like it to? You personally go get three new business partners on this call next Friday or any day throughout this week. I'll show you new trajectory in your business. I'll show you, I'll show you excitement. I'll show you a, an elixir that will get you high like you've never seen before. I'll show you traction. I'll show you a difference. Intense, isn't it? Empowering what you know. What's the end? Impatience. Now, it's the most important part of this garden. Now, it's the most important part of this garden. It's the most important ingredient, uh, you know, in this part of the garden, in this vegetation. Now, not Monday. Not what I'm going to do tomorrow. What you going to do now? What's going to change now? What's going to shift now? What's going to happen for you today? What's going to make you? I woke up this morning. Something has, everything has to change. God, what needs to change? Your patience and your actions. You're going to use the excuse that it's the weekend, Byron? I watched this guy who talks about investments. He said, my name is George and everybody's name is George. My name is Byron, everybody's name is Byron. So your name is Byron. <laughs> you gonna wait until Monday, Byron? Sergio, you gonna wait till Monday? Ursula, you gonna wait till Monday? Cause I know some people that ain't gonna wake up tomorrow. I don't even know if I'm gonna wake up tomorrow. So the only thing I know is for me to wake up tomorrow, I have to do something today. <laughs> the N stands for now. The C after the N stands for consistently. I have to have patience consistently doing something now every day intensely in a timely fashion and pay the price for all of my actions to be empowered to move forward today, right now, I must be consistent in my paid actions, doing it in a timely way, intensely, every day, which is the last E on patience, every day. Every day, I must consistently pay my actions forward, timely, intensely, empowering everyone around me, lifting up the bar for me, my son, my mom, my organization, my family, 
now? When do I do it right now? How often do I do it every day intensely in a timely fashion, investing time only in those seeds that are gonna produce me a rapid real result now and forever every day, patiently paying the price, damn it. That is my training today. I am complete.